What is good guys? Today, we got some goodies to show you. Before we get into them though, I need to say a massive thank you to Nuke Performance for sponsoring the 33.4 and sending out these goodies. They sent us one of their awesome surge tanks as well as a Deechworks fuel pump. Uh, anyways, enough talking. Let's get straight into it and I'll show you what we've got here. And we also need to figure out how and where we're going to install it in the boot. Let's get to it. Okay, so we're currently in the boot here. So let's take a quick look. Uh, this is the Dishworks. I guess it's the 300 litre per hour fuel pump. I think off the top of my head, I can't remember. Uh, it'll be written there. No, it's the 400. So 400 litre per hour pump, which is going to be more than enough than what we need for this bad boy. Because, I mean, the max horsepower that I ever want to make out of this is really 500. Uh, so that'll be more than enough we're only going with one pump as well and then i also threw in all the other bits and pieces that uh, came out of this box when i opened it previously so without further ado oh man look at this thing this thing is seriously one of the coolest things i've ever seen like when it comes to surge tanks and things like that i'm used to seeing like just welded up ones and stuff in australia but this is by far the prettiest sexiest for surge tank i've ever seen uh, <laughs> Literally, it's entirely made out of billet alloy. So you can see like all the ridging and stuff from the CNC machine and everything on this like quality wise is just amazing. The bracket and everything that it comes with, it's it's totally beautiful. Um, and then if I can get this out one handed, which is gonna be a mission, uh, let's try and get it to pop because it's got a no ring seal there we go sweet and then that's where everything bolts onto and i know it doesn't look like much right now but it will be in a bit i'll show you um but yeah now everything about this thing is just incredible i love it to pieces now the main reason why i decided to show you guys all of this inside the box sorry inside the boot is because this is where it needs to be mounted and i'm trying to figure out if there's a way that i can mount it in the boot without it taking up too much real estate with everything that I take to the track with me. Now, I don't put tires or wheels in the back here, but I have a lot of tools and spare parts that I bring with me all the time to the track in case I need to, one, fix something on my car or help a friend out with their car. So this is kind of like a majority of the things I bring, but I normally have a couple other boxes that I throw in there with spare parts, control arms and tie rod ends and things like that. So um, I would really love it if it were possible to get it in here. I know it's gonna be a tight fit. I know that it's probably not gonna happen, uh, but I'm gonna try. We're gonna see if we can get it to fit in there. Let's just see. I mean, I can take the strap brace out too if I need to, but we can slide this in here like that. And yeah, this is way too tall. Definitely not gonna go in there. Um, Okay, so it's clear that there's not enough space here for me to work that out. It's a bit of a shame. It is definitely possible for it to fit in there, but I would have to custom fab some stuff up and I just don't have the ability to do that here. Um, so, we're gonna go for here. We're gonna mount it in this corner here. Uh, that's obviously gonna be the best place for it. Um, and then we're gonna run all the lines um, just, just through here straight to the tank. Um, all the lines that I'm going to use as well, I am not changing any of the fuel lines going up to the engine bay. We're keeping those factory. There is no point in changing to like dash eight or dash six, seven, or sorry, dash eight or dash six up until the engine, unless you're doing like 600 plus horsepower. Um, you can get away with factory fuel lines up to pretty much 500 horsepower. I mean, sure, it would be nice to, to have like dash six all the way up there or dash eight, but there's just no need for it. Um, so what I've got is I've got some uh, special AN fittings and stuff coming to adapt off this straight to normal fuel line, which will be sick, um, as well as we're only running one pump in this. This is designed to handle two pumps. So like I said, 500 horsepower max, one pump is totally more than enough, will be okay. And um, uh, with all the adapters and the fuel lines and stuff like that, it's still gonna look really good. The main reason why we want this, this is not really, this is not a thing that you add to gain horsepower. This is a thing that you add to keep fuel pressure consistency. The way it works is you have a pickup pump, which is, uh, I have a 275 liter per hour Nismo fuel pump, which pumps fuel out of the tank into this little tank and then inside this little tank is a 400 liter per hour pump which uh, will pump to the engine bay and that entire line from here to the engine 
is pressurized and it'll be running at about 30 psi or so um, and what the the goal is is so that when my car's sliding sideways and everything and drifting and i'm hitting heavy corners the fuel's sloshing around in this tank sometimes away from the fuel pickup which then means that um we miss out on a bit of fuel pressure and the pump all of a sudden starves for a little bit right and we lose fuel pressure at the start and then sometimes if you spin out your car you'll notice that you can't start it right away and you got to wait for that fuel pressure to build back up that is why um, so it's also to try and be safe make sure my car's not going to lean out and things like that because of loss of fuel pressure so what this means is with all the fuel coming from the main tank into here um, as you know the space in here is much narrower so when it's sloshing around it's pretty much impossible for the bottom of the pump to ever miss out on fuel this this will always be full um, and it's it's it, even if it was a little bit low it would still be very hard for the bottom of the pump to not have fuel to it and because you know let's just say that for some reason this pump gets a big the fuel sloshes off to one side and it loses a bit of fuel in the time that it takes for that pump to suck up more fuel again and everything levelize and come back in here it hasn't had enough time to empty this three liter tank so that's why like you get this this shorter thing it just it's, it's a surge tank it's to stop you from running out of fuel and losing fuel pressure and having issues like that so it's a safety thing it's not so i can gain horsepower or anything like that so that's why i don't need to like upgrade all my fuel lines and do anything crazy like that um, but it is definitely well worth it and something that i'd recommend to people that are starting to get a little bit gangster with their entries um, and starting to go a lot faster as well in their drift cars okay so what i'm going to do now is we're going to take the lid off this i'm going to get all the parts in the pump mount everything internally show you how this thing works and how to set it up and it's going to be ready for me to pretty much just put in there when the fittings arrive bolt it all in hook up all the fuel lines and we'll be ready to go okay so popping the top off here let's take a look and let me just explain everything that's going on here uh, first of all these are your terminals so this can hold two pumps i'm running it with one pump though and the way it works is you've got um kind of two positive terminals here and one negative terminal and uh, obviously on the back it's the same and that's how you wire in your pumps um the outlet is here so this is where two pumps can go in you can see i have a bung in one because i'm only running one pump and then i have the um the little barb fitting here that goes to the fuel pump for the single one um and then that's your outlet so this has currently got a dash 10 on here they can give you a dash 12 dash 10 or dash 8. i have a dash 8 coming and that's going to allow me to run a little uh right angle adapter to a barb just like kind of this barb to go to normal fuel lines uh same with these these are dash 8 fittings now these do not have to be in any particular particular order because they all just dump straight back into the surge tank um, but the way this sets up is this is your outlet to the engine this is your return from the engine then this would be your return to the fuel tank and then this would be your inlet from the fuel tank so the pump that's in your fuel tank will come through to this one and then the return going back to your tank will be this one so what happens is fuels coming in from here and dumping in and filling up the tank uh, if this gets too full it returns back to the fuel tank then if um, the engine obviously that's pressurized to 30 psi through a pressure line from this to the engine anything that then seeps out of that you know while it's holding its pressure it's letting fuel go the return line is this from the engine that's going into here and if this is already full like i said it just goes then back out here to the fuel tank so i know that's a little bit confusing but that's how it works and it's really straightforward then this is pretty much just one big empty cavity um i mean it's a it's a surge tank it's a fuel tank <laughs> a little a little miniature fuel tank really so cool what we're going to do now is i'm going to put this off to the side i might actually just sit it in there and i'm going to put everything together on this so that then we can mount the um uh, the fuel pump and everything to it and the mounting system is actually really really good um it uses like these kind of mounts here so actually what we can do is probably slide this on already yep cool and then you've got this guy here this actually just screws straight in here to the top of the hat. We'll call this a little hat. That'll screw in like that. And what I'll do is I'll get my shifter out too so I can tighten everything. Yeah, it's a 13. Cool. So we'll just make sure that's in there nice and tight and it's not going to come out. We'll also make sure that uh, all these lines here are nice and tight. This little fitting for the fuel pump. It's got a really nice, like, uh, copper crush washer on there as well which is good to see it's not like just a normal one it's one of those special like double layered sprung ones it's it's really good i've never seen anything like it actually um cool so we've got that we also need my allen key set 
Where is that? Here, because we need to tighten all these Allen keys up. You want to be very careful as well that uh, if you're using O-rings on any of these things and these fittings, like these fittings here, put some rubber grease on them just like you see all the rubber grease around here for this O-ring. You want to get that on the O-rings of this so they don't tear and whatnot when you tighten those AN lines, those AN fittings, sorry. So yeah, I'm just going to tighten the crap out of this little bung because if this is loose and it's spraying out fuel, I'll lose pressure because everything after this is pressurized to whatever I set my fuel regulator at in the engine bay. Cool, so there's that done. Now I believe the next step is that kind of goes there with this big bolt, which is a stainless steel bolt and uses an Allen key once again to tighten up. Looks great. And then what we want to do is try and line these up so that the pipe when I put it on there is going to be nice and easy. And I'm not going to do this up super tight. I just want to do this nice and uh, like firm just so that it holds the pump and it's not going to drop out on me. But I can also still slide it up and down a little bit. So just tighten that a bit. There we go. So I can still kind of... Oh, no, that was a bit too tight. <laughs> there you guys go. Loosen that up a bit. Just a tiny bit. There we go, so I can still move the pump, but it's not gonna fall out. We now need an Allen key to tighten that up. I think it's an eight mil, it looks pretty big. Yep, certainly is. Tighten that all up properly once we've got the line and everything in place. But I'm pretty happy that that's probably where it's gonna sit. But we also need to work out, by looking at this, when this sits in there, how deep the pump is. So that's probably actually like spot on, honestly. If I sit this in here, is it going to hit the bottom? Nope. Clear is totally fine. Uh, come on. There we go. Cool. So that's actually probably at the place that we want to leave it then. Which is a pretty awesome fluke that I don't have to uh, change that anymore. So we'll now tighten that up. Slide this bad boy on there. Like so. All the way down. Then, you want to slide your pump in, line up the hose, and then pretty much just push it on. There we go. Sick. Then, we want to do up our hose clamps, making sure those are nice and tight too, because we definitely don't want this popping off. <laughs> while we're drifting because then that's going to pretty much cause the problem we're trying to prevent. Sweet. So there we go. It's this one done and then we'll do the top one. Now the next thing we need to do is just make sure that this goes in here now. The little, uh, I don't know, like filter bag, pickup bag. I don't know what you'd call this honestly. I guess that's what it is. Another thing you want to make sure as well is that it's rotated in such a way that it's actually not going to be up against the wall. So, in theory now, all that's left to do is wire it in, which is as simple as pretty much connecting this plug. From here, we don't, we can actually, you can ignore these little black wires and you can just snip that off. You don't need that. All you need to worry about are these two wires. And all I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna actually leave the length here. Cause I don't wanna cut these short. I like having a little bit of extra length in case I wanna use them. And what I'm gonna do is pretty much crimp on the ends right now. It comes with all the crimping bits and everything, the kit. Seriously, like, Nuke Performance really thought long and hard about the types of customers that use their stuff because everything comes in the kit like literally it's brilliant I love it so we got the yellow there cool put it in line it up crush it make sure you do these properly because if you don't you'll be going back into your tank and doing it all all over again Okay, so all the wiring's complete, as you can see there. We're pretty much good to go. Um, I've tightened everything on this side of things. I'll just double check everything 
and make sure that this doesn't need tightening anymore. No, we're pretty much good there. That's not going anywhere. So, we can pretty much slip this in here now. Like so. Line up the bolting holes. There we go. And bolt this thing down. So now, I don't have to do anything when all the fittings arrive. All I need to do is hook up all the lines on the top, hook up the wiring, and it'll go. Cool. And there we go. That's the surge tank all put together. I think the only thing left to do though, before we talk about anything else, is we get this bad boy put on there. put it up the top. There we go. Look at that. Nice. There we go. Nuke Performance Surge Tank all put together, ready for me to bolt into the boot and send it. Okay, so since the last drift event, as you can see, the back of this car, it's hard to tell on camera. If we get up close, you might see it. The whole back of this car is just covered in like soot. So uh, definitely due to give this car a nice clean, so that's what we're going to do. Also clean off some uh, rubber slap marks there. Really lucky actually that that didn't like dig into the paint or anything. So I'm going to hit that with some CRC. That's what I use to get off all my rubber on when it gets slapped onto the car. As well as like on my fenders here. Normally like a bit of rubber that comes off from the fronts and stuff will flick up here. The best way that I find to get that off is just use some CRC lubricant. Spray that on there, rub it with a rag and it comes right off. So that's what we'll do, put you on the time lapse. Okay, so the car's all finished and it looks so much better, nice and clean. None of that black stuff anywhere, as well as all the tire slap came right off with just a quick spray of CRC and a shop towel. Look how much better that looks there. Okay, so I'm actually gonna wrap up the video here. Uh, I need to actually go and get a whole bunch of work done, a whole bunch of tax paperwork and things like that. It's gonna take me hours, so I'm gonna actually just grab my laptop and go to Starbucks because I seem to be more productive and less distracted if I go to Starbucks and do that kind of thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. I know it was kind of like a how-to video and just explaining how a surge tank works. I hope I've been able to increase your knowledge on that and also, maybe you guys actually were suffering a bit of issues of fuel starvation and you, you never even knew that you needed a surge tank. So anyways, that's that. And uh, also, don't, don't wash your car how I wash your car. If you're a perfectionist, you should be using two bucket systems and uh, foam guns and things like that. But I just don't care because daily drifter, okay? <laughs> so I don't want to hear any of you guys complaining about that. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Jamatane.